In this part two video, we're going to start learning how to solve systems of equations by graphing. So the first thing is, what is a system of equation? A system of equations is two or more equations. And when we say a system of equa equations, it means that we're looking for when are both of these equations true. And so if you think about this one just by itself, if I was to graph that line, so when we talked in the warm up about solutions, if I was to graph this line y equals negative 1 half x, if I was to graph that, it's going to go like this. I'm going to have a slope of negative 1 half. And so when is that equation true? Well, it's true as long as I get an ordered pair that's on the line. So if I grab an ordered pair like that one, so that's negative 4 positive 2, if I plug that in, that's going to be a solution. If I get another point like 0, 0, that's on the line, it's going to be a solution. And this one, just as a last example, 4, negative 2. So if I say negative 2 equals negative 1 half times 4, that's going to be true as well. So this equation by itself, it's true whenever we have a point that's on that the equation of that line. So if I graph the second equation, this one, um, in order to graph it, I'm first going to put it in slope intercept form, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. So it's going to be y is equal to negative 1 half x, and then 8 divided by 2 is 4. So if I graph that one, I have a slope of negative 1 half x, or negative 1 half, sorry, and then that's my line. So on the red line, all of the points on the red line are equation or solutions of this equation. So like if I take this point, 0, 4, and if I plug that in for x and y, so 4 is equal to negative 1 half times 0 plus 4, 4 equals 4, that's true. If I take this point right here, 2, 3, so 3 is equal to negative 1 half times 2 plus 4, that's 3 is equal to negative 1 plus 4, which is true. So you see that whenever we have one equation, all of the points that are on the graph show the solutions, and that's why the graph exists, because it's just showing all of the solutions for that equation. So in this picture, we have these two equations, and we're showing all of the solutions for both of them. Each of them have infinitely many solutions. This one has an infinite number of solutions. This one has an infinite number of solutions. Now together, when we solve a system of equations, which is what we're going to do now, when we solve a system of equations, that means when are they simultaneously true? So when do these two point or these two lines, when do they have the same point that is going to be true in both of them? And for this this situation, you see that in this top line right there, all of the points are never going to coincide with all of the points in this bottom line. And so in that case, there is no solution because they are never going to have any points in common. So when we solve a system of equations, what we're looking at is when do they have something in common? And sometimes when we see something like this, they don't because these two lines that show all the solutions, they're parallel. They're never going to intersect. They're never going to overlap. And so that's when we say no solution. So when we have a system of equations, that means that we're going to have two variables. You can have a system of three equations with, um, you would have three variables, and you can have even more. You can have as many as you want. The thing is, if I just had, like, if I didn't have that, if I just had the equation y equals negative one-half x, and I said solve that equation, you can't solve it. You can't solve it because look at how many solutions there are. You can't name all of them. And so you can, it's impossible to solve an equation with two variables, but if I have a second um, equation and I have a system and they both have two variables, I can solve a system because then I know I need to find out when they're true at the same time. And so this one has no solution. So let's go to the next one and see what that looks like. Okay, number 10, um, the first equation y equals x. So that's y equals 1x plus 0. So I'm going to have my intercept of 0, my slope is 1, and so if you remember, I talked earlier about that being the parent function of linear equations. So all linear equations are looking like that. And then just review what we've talked about. All of these points 
on the line. That's what makes the line is all of these infinite number of points. They're all solutions. Every single one of them is a solution to that line. Now let's take the second line, x is equal to 4. And remember that that's going to be a vertical line because x equals, and so there's no y, and so it just goes through the x-axis, and it's going to go through the x-axis at 4. So that needs to be a line that you're familiar with, that you see that, and you're like, oh, it's a vertical line, and you know that. So all of the green points, all of the points on this green line, they're all solutions to that equation. Now question, where are they the same point? Where do they intersect? And you see that they intersect right here at that point. And that means that that point, which is 4, 4, is a solution to this equation. So y equals x. Yep, that's true. And it's a solution to that equation. 4 equals 4. Yep, that's true too. There's no other point anywhere that would be a solution to both of these at the same time. That's the only one. You can see that the green line and the blue line will never intersect again. They only have this one time where they intersect, and that's the solution. So when we talk about a solution to a system of equations, one of the most common ways to write our solution is in an ordered pair. So we would say that the solution, you would just write it as an ordered pair. Sometimes in some contexts we put it like in set notation like that. I'm not going to worry about that. If you just write it as an ordered pair, then we're good. Okay, let's try number 11. The first thing we're going to do is just take the first equation. You want to put it in slope-intercept form so you know how to graph it. So let's get the y by itself and graph it. So y-intercept, my slope is 3. So obviously you need to be able to graph lines. Okay, we're going to graph it like that. And remember, all the points on that green line are solutions for that equation. There's billions of them. Now let's graph the second equation. So y is equal to 3x minus 4. And you go and you look and you're like, oh, that's exactly the same line. Okay, so what points do they have in common? Do they have this point in common? Do they have this one in common? What about this one or this one? So one thing that people get confused is they think, oh, well, they have all of them in common. Okay, question, do they have this one in common? Do they have this one in common? So they don't have all of the points in common, right? So something that people write is they'll say, this is all real numbers. But it's not, because I just showed you two of them that they did not include, and those are real numbers too. So it's not all real numbers. So when you're solving a system of equations and they end up being the same line, they do have all of these points in common, all of them. About how many is that? Billions, trillions? So what we say for that is we say infinite number of solutions. That's a different answer than saying all real numbers because all real numbers means literally everything works infinite number of solutions means a lot of answers are true, but not everything. So this is what you say when you're solving a system of equations. This little bracket right here, that is usually what denotes a system. That's how you know you're looking at a system of equations. So there's no ordered pair to write, and I will re-emphasize, you will not be writing all real numbers for answers to a system of equations. All real numbers is if you have a single equation with a single variable, like two x equals um, 4x minus 2x, that's going to be all real numbers because it doesn't matter what you plug in for x, but that's not true when you have two variables. You can't plug in every single number and that's always going to be true. Okay, let's try this one, number 12. y is equal to negative 2. So remember, it only has one variable, so that tells you which axis it goes through. So it's going to go through the y-axis at negative 2, and every point on that line will be a solution. And so if you look at a point right here, um, 3, negative 2, in that case, y is equal to negative 2. What about this one? Negative 1, negative 2? Yep, y is equal to negative 2. Over here, negative 5, negative 2? Yep, y is equal to negative 2. So every point on that line is going to satisfy the equation. So let's look at the second equation then y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 4. So we're going to go down to negative 4 for our y-intercept. We're going to go up 2 and over 3. 
up two and over three, and we're going to make that line. So every point on the red line is a solution to that equation. So I'll just put like a little red mark there, a green mark there. So every point on the red line is a solution to that second equation. So the question is, as a system, what is the solution? So I'm looking for where are they the same at the same time, right? There is where they're the same. So that ordered pair is one, two, three, and down two. So it is three, two. And that means that if you plug in three for X and two for Y, it will work in the first one and it will work in the second one. Okay, number 13. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one yourself. You will have to put both of these equations into slope-intercept form and then see if you can come up with the, the solution and let's just make sure that you're getting this. Okay, what you should have done, take the first equation, we're going to move the 2x, so y equals negative 2x plus 3. I'm going to graph that. Okay, so you should have this line, and remember that every point is a solution to that equation. Then we're going to take the second equation, I'm going to move the 3. And then my slope is 4, so I'm going to go up 4 and over 1, up 4 and over 1. Please use a straight edge. I can't with my um, iPad, but please use a straight edge to make your line straight because when you solve by graphing, graphing is a good way to start learning how to do this, but it's terribly inaccurate if your lines are off and you need to have nice, sharp, straight lines. So use a straight edge to do, to do this. If I see that you're not using a straight edge, I'm going to have something to say about that. Okay, that's the point right there where those two lines intersect. That's where they coincide. That's where they're solved simultaneously. And again, this little bracket that we put in the beginning, that denotes that we're solving both of these at the same time. And so my solution is going to be that ordered pair, which is 1, 1. Again, you should be able to plug in for x and y, and it would work in the first one, and it would work in the second one. And that's how you check your work. That's how you can check like on a test qu question or something. You can make sure that this is really true. And it can't just work in one of them. It has to work in both of them. If you plug it in, it works in one, great, but if it doesn't work in both of them, then you're wrong. And so you need to make sure that it really does work in both. Okay, let's go to number 14. Again, pause it, see if you can do this. Okay, the first one, the y-intercept is zero. I'm gonna go down three and over one because my slope is negative three. I can go up three and backwards one, so I'm gonna have this line right there. Okay, and then my second equation, y equals 4x, so that y-intercept is 0, and it's going to be a slope of positive 4. And so I'm going to have that line. Okay, so everything in the red is a solution for the first equation. Everything in green is a solution for the second equation. Where is it red and green at the same time? And it's going to be right there where they coincide, and that ordered pair is 0, 0. And so that would be the solution. So you can see if you plug in for x and you plug in for y, 0 equals negative 3 times 0, yep. 0 equals 4 times 0, yep. So we know that that's right. So you can check systems of equations, and that's going to be something that we're going to keep bringing up a lot. Okay, so when solving a system of equations, what you're really asking yourself is you're saying how many solutions or points do the two equations have in common? And so if you think about, like, if you have two lines, they can intersect at one, one point. Like, that's the most they can happen. They can't, like, curve around and intersect again because then they wouldn't be lines. It is possible, and we saw this, where you could have two parallel lines and they're never going to intersect, so that would be no solution. We also saw where you can have one line and then you graph another one and it ends up being exactly the same line, and that's an infinite number of solutions. And so we have these three different statements that we can make. So it says, if when solving a system of equations you get a true statement, the, st the solution is infinite number of solutions. And that just means that there is an infinite number of points that the equations have in common. It's not all points, so not all real numbers. Okay, so remember, all real numbers is not the answer. And when you have a true statement, remember like before when we had like a true statement like 3 equals 3? Um, we're not seeing this because we're graphing. We're not algebraically solving this. And so our true statement is that the lines are true or together at all times. Okay, that's what we're viewing as a true statement. So that's infinite number of solutions. When solving a system of equations, you want to know how many points they have in common. So how many solutions you might think, well, can they have more than one? You can if you have a system where you have like a line and then maybe an exponential. Then they could have two points in common. That You could have an exponential graph and a line that have no points in common. 
So you can't have a line in an exponential that would have infinite number of points in common because if you think about, they couldn't have one that's a line and one's not. So there's different systems that we can have. We're mostly going to focus on linear systems, but it is possible we're going to see some exponential ones as well. So the answer to your system of solutions is to list the point or points that they have in common, or you're going to say no solution, which means they have no points in common, or you're going to say infinite number of solutions since we can't list them all. Okay, number 15, continuing on with this idea. Solve each system by graphing. So graphing is the method that we're using to solve this. And so when you solve by graphing, it just simply means you make a graph and then using your graph, you can tell what the solution is. So we're going to start the first one, intercept of one, slope is one half, up one and over two. Um, you wanna use a straight edge for sure. I like to put in a number of points here, even though technically it only takes two points to make a line. I usually find that even if I'm using a straight edge, it definitely helps me stay on track with everything. And um, so it, it just makes my lines a lot better. Okay, so that's my first equation. Then graph your second equation. Your y-intercept is nine. My slope is negative three halves. So I'm gonna go down three over two, down three over two, down three over two. And then I'm gonna graph that line. And as you're doing this, you see like, Oh yeah, I know what the solution is because it's right here where they intersected. So you figure out what ordered pair that is. So you're going to count one, two, three, four on the x-axis and then one, two, three, and that's your solution. Now, number 16, this one's going to be a little bit different and you can tell immediately because the graph just, the, the grid just looks different. But if you look at the equations, you'll see why. This equation right there is exponential. So let's do the easy part first. Let's graph the line. Um, y is equal to 4x minus 4. So we're, we're going to start at negative 4. And we're going to go up 4 over 1, up 4 over 1, up 4 over 1. And there's my line. So all of the solutions to this first equation are on the line. And that's why we have arrows at either end because it keeps on going because there's, it doesn't just stop having solutions because you run out of graph. Now the second one, and this is something that I mentioned in the warm up, but we want to make sure that we understand if I have that equation, it's the same as y equals one times two to the x power. And that's because our y intercept is at one. And if you were to make a table, like if you plugged in zero, two to the zero power is one. And then it's gonna double. And so one times two is two, two times two is four. Um, oh wait, yeah, and then four times two is eight, and then eight times two is 16. So what's happening, and I know the behavior of this graph because it's exponential, I've seen them before. I know what's going on. And so I know that it's going to actually be getting in those two points. And that means that if I was to plug in two, so two to the second power is four. And if I plug in three, two to the third power is eight. So that means that two, four, and three, eight are solutions. If you go back to your linear equation, if you plug in two, four, so two, four, you would say four is equal to four times two. That's true. If you plug in the other point, because the other one has to work too if it's if it's a solution as well, eight is equal to four times three minus four. That's true too. So these are my solutions. There are two solutions because those two graphs intersect in two points. If they only intersected in one spot, then there would just be one solution. Um, and it is possible to have a linear and an exponential that only intersect in one in one spot. And so like I, I showed you this before, like if you had an exponential like that and you had like a linear like that, they would only intersect at one spot. So it is possible to have that. It's possible to have your exponential and then your linear kind of just comes up like that. They don't intersect at all. So there's different possibilities, but when you have an exponential, it's possible to have two solutions.